Hey, we have quite the show for you today. We are covering the NFC North. Who's the king in the North? Can Mitchell Trubisky take a step forward? Is Aaron Rodgers finally a value? And of course, most importantly, carry on Johnson. There's plenty of talk ahead. Great stuff. Stay tuned. Hey, Footland. Thanks for joining us. It's draft season, and that means it's time to head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. It's the only tool you need this offseason, this draft season. We've been spending months and months getting it ready, and you know what? We're going to keep getting it ready because we spend the entire offseason updating this bad boy. Video profiles, our rankings, risk ratings, the one and only reception perception from Matt Harmon, tons and tons of research goodness. Check it out now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Hi, this is Kyle Rudolph, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's Thursday, July 25th, and we've got a great show for you. This is the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the fantasy hitman right, is here and present and accounted for. It's my name. Do not wear it out. Seriously. Jason, oh. Jason Moore is here. Do not drag my <laughs> name through the mud of those jokes over there. Um, I think we have one of these. Uh, oh, that, yeah, that's right. So Mike went with the don't wear it out. Don't wear it out joke. I remember so that. Every once in a while, we need to. Uh, don't wear it out. Uh, I believe I said do not. Um, we need I'm, to review that joke. I am far too eloquent for your contractions. On mm. the YouTube, he got, a, I believe, a, a one, a total of one point for that. That's weird. Um, I wasn't even going for a score, but I'll get you. And that's what hurts. You really should be trying harder. Uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, <laughs> you want me to try harder? No, is please that, don't. You've opened up the G. No. Uh, I'm Andy Holloway. You can follow Mike at FF Hitman. I felt like Chris Farley right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Down by the river. <laughs> you can follow Mike at FF Hitman on Twitter. Jason at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway, and the show is at the fantasy... Oh, nope. The FF Ballers. <laughs> They don't give you that many characters <laughs> on Twitter. But uh, we welcome you in. We've got the NFC North on the show today. We'll be breaking down that division. Got a great quick question. Some news to talk about. A lot more is happening day by day. Teams getting into camp, uh, injury situations, the active PUP list. We want to get you primed and ready for your fantasy football season. We're excited. We're happy you're here, and we're uh, very excited to be giving away a Patrick Mahomes signed jersey, courtesy mm -hmm. of Pristine Auction. You can get in on that. The giveaway ends at the end of July, so yeah, you you've better got about, hurry a, up. A, about a week left. And that's FootClanGiveaway.com. You can support us uh, over there by voting at the Podcast Awards. We're going for a fourth consecutive win. The Quattro. The Quattro, as we call it. And um, there are other ways you, you can enter, footclangiveaway.com. Let's, uh, let's start with this quick question. This comes in from Raymond. Mm. Which same team player stack do you see yourself drafting the most this season? This one is really easy for me because every almost every mock I do, every real draft I do, there are two guys from the same team that I am madly in love with as far as value I think every time I'm considering taking them, they are always there 100% of the time. They're both disrespected. I don't get it because they're on one of the best three offenses in the league. They were top options last year, but Robert Woods and Jared Goff are great values this year. Yeah, I'm scooping them up everywhere. I will probably have a team with that stack. Yeah, I'll probably win the championship. Okay. okay, I mean that that one <laughs> makes right. sense. I mean, both high end options. You went quarterback, wide receiver. Yes. Um, are there running back, wide receiver stacks that you see yourself getting into? Like, I don't know. Maybe you spend a late first on DeAndre Hopkins, snag a little Lamar Vi Miller value later in the draft, as I've been known to do in yeah. a mock draft. I prefer to get away from that one. But like, if you for just Aaron talking Jones and. MVS, uh, 
Team Geronimo over here for life. Uh, so, so I wouldn't be doing that stack. If we're talking, you know, high end wide receivers and a running back where I'm actually okay with that combo, and these are both early picks, so I'll, I'll just confine my answer to that. I would say T.Y. Hilton and Marlon Mack. Okay. I would be okay. If if the draft fell to a certain point where I end up with both those players, I'm I'm good with that stack. Now there there would be a train of thought here. We talked about the Bengals on the last episode. I said, you know, getting AJ Green in the fourth, if you were so lucky, top mm-hmm. of the fourth, is stealing. But Joe Mixon and AJ Green on an offense that you're uncertain Man. about, you know, is that a stack you're comfortable with because of the value Joe Mixon and the Late first, AJ Green and the, I mean, if you believe what what you believe on AJ Green, which is that he is great and healthy, he's going to be awesome. Then I wouldn't worry about the team itself. You you can look back to last season, Saquon Barkley and Odell Beckham Jr. were a great stack to have. Good example from a terrible offense. If the players are great and the value is there, you don't need to be afraid. Uh, I'm not quite as bullish on AJ Green this year as you are, so I. I probably would avoid that, but if you are correct in A.J. Green still being a dominant top 10 type wide receiver, then then the value is there. And I think a lot gets made of you You want the wide receiver receiving or the quarterback receiving option stacked because you double up on your touchdowns. It's fun. And it is fun. But you can also make an argument for a running back wide receiver stack from a consistency standpoint. While they won't score a touchdown on the same play, you'll have a much more even baseline through the year, um, it, uh, you know, assuming you've got two really good options. I wonder if the Bengals offense and the Giants offense, that comparison, I, I think that that's a good one. I think that that's one that could be indicative of what you see. There were still, you know, Eli Manning had a lot of yardage last year. I mean, that's what you got out of that offense. It wasn't the best offense in football, but you had huge fantasy stars because everything ran through those two guys. I could see that happening in yeah, Cincinnati. Light, a light version of it though, because Joe Mixon is is not Saquon, and no, AJ Green at this point is not Odo Beckham. D- Dalton's probably more capable of giving you big That's upper fair. echelon games than yeah, Eli. Balance, though balances out a bit the of scale a, a little bit. All right, we have some Bengals news. Let's get into it. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Tyler Boyd was signed to a four-year, $43 million extension by the Bengals. Congratulations. Through 2023. Mike, you said this in the studio yesterday. Tyler Boyd decided not to bet on himself, and he right. took this contract. Probably a smart move considering some things worked in his advantage last year. I know you guys have illustrated that Boyd was good with green. You still have a very small sample of, of elite performances by Boyd with green. So I think this was the right move by Tyler Boyd. And they prob- lock up a young man that yeah. that's getting better. It's probably a good move from both parties. Tyler yes. Boyd gets his, and the Bengals are. This is not that much. It sounds. I mean, obviously, forty three million dollars. It's, it's a lot of quiche. I would accept that, <laughs> isn't it? Le- I think <laughs> but, it's less than Sterling Shepard's deal. Yeah, I mean, and you, you just know, above Tyler Lockett's deal. So it's it's not an extravagant deal to. And, and as when you lock a guy up early, it's one of those things where every time it happens, you think, oh no, they're paying so much. But as the season goes and, and larger contracts loom. Locking up players early from a franchise standpoint is actually usually you're not getting the reset market later. So I, I think it's a I think it's a good move both sides. The question now is they're saying, okay, we're going to shift to AJ Green and get a contract done there. Is is that just lip service? Or do you you know what I mean? Is does this get in the way right. of saying let's pay AJ Green a long term big deal? I don't think it gets in the way. I I would think it helps. If it, I mean it, it makes sure that the, the 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 team is cohesive. If it's AJ Green and Boyd once again running through another contract cycle, that's only a positive thing for AJ Green because he Boyd is good. He's a he's a great. He is a good player. He's a good wide receiver. He's not elite. He's not getting paid like an elite wide receiver. But we when we were talking about this, it was, it was okay. Well, Boyd has kind of accepted who he is, where he falls in the pecking order. He's not going to take a gamble on health. He's just going to get paid, which is a crap ton of money, enough money that he should be able to live on forever. Well, Marvin, and, jo- Marvin and, Jones could have stayed in Cincinnati and taken wide receiver 2-3 money. Right. He chose to bet on himself, and he chose to go sign a bigger deal and try to be the guy. That's not what Tyler Boyd did. Right, and speaking to A.J. Green, 
Green is not going to take that type of a deal. A.J. Green is not going to take a hometown discount at this point of, of his career. He's going to try and get paid as if he is a healthy, elite wide receiver. One of those things is still true, in my opinion. He's elite, but the health is definitely a, a big risk for for a franchise to go in and say, okay, we've, we're locked you in. You're our wide receiver one now for four years and your body seems to be falling apart. All right, let's transition to another elite wide receiver then because it's not smooth sailing for the rest of the upper echelon wideouts right, right now. Hopkins is on the active PUP. Julio Jones, 10 to 14 days away from being cleared to practice with a foot injury. This one's actively affecting Julio Jones right now. <clears throat> Unless that foot is also petitioning for a contract extension <laughs> for the next 10 to 14 days. But, you know, Tyreek Hill, has the th he's one of the upper echelon drafted wideouts. He's got things hanging over him. Um, there's some problems in right. confidence for some of these wideouts with the foot injuries that have happened to Julio and to A.J. Green over the past couple of years. Um, does this concern you about Julio? This is the first we've heard that he's going to miss extended time due to the foot. Not the first in his career, right. but as of right now. It's part of the game with Julio Jones. If you're if you're new to fantasy, welcome well, in. Welcome to the Julio Jones party where every single week you watch him hobble down the field, you watch him hobble off the field, you rip your hair out screaming why is Julio not on the field? And then he ends the game with 120 yards cuz he's just an absolute monster. Okay. I just but want it's, that. It's, it's part of it's part of owning Julio Jones in fantasy football is is knowing that your stomach is always going to be a little rumbly. Yeah, and 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 because of his history with that, I think they'll still sign him that large long-term contract. I think it's coming soon. All right, we need to talk Falcons with this story as well. Fifth-round rookie um, Quadri Olison. Yesterday it was reported he's going to help pick up some of the slack in short yardage situations. You have a backfield with Olison, Devonta Freeman, and Ido Smith. If we've if we've seen this history of Freeman, not necessarily holding up, like the, yeah, the last two years, correct? In the past couple of years, and this team has been content to kind of share the load. Is there a is there a potential for fantasy owners to be surprised and disappointed in Freeman's output this year because of uh, the utilization of some of these complimentary backs? You know, they drafted Ito. This regime drafted Ito. They like him. Say what you will about what's on the field. I said this the other day. We don't look through the same lens that the coaches look through. The coaches look through a different lens than than fantasy owners. What is your concern about if, if Olson does take carries inside the two? Let's just hype. Let's say he takes half of those. How does that change your view of Devonta Freeman if that becomes a if, reality? If he actually did that, that it would be a large concern because part of Freeman's upside is that he's a double digit rushing touchdown type of a guy. I look at this as more of an indictment on Ito personally, and it would it would be shocking to me that if you know what you have in Freeman and he's paid to he's paid to be a number one running back, and then you just decide, okay, this fifth round rookie, we're gonna give him this goal line job, even though he has no NFL experience, and we know that Freeman is incredible. In, in these particular situations. Yeah, so part of, it, it would shock me if he's getting goal line. Work. Part of our job here is to sift through news and decide what is actionable, what's real, what's fluff, what's uh, you know, a headline that, that matters. When I look at the, the actual article and see you know, the context, they were so bad at, at running the ball last year. That was obviously without Devonta Freeman. And they're talking about this rookie. What are they going to say other than he's going to help us get right. the ball in on the goal line? Like that, I don't think that this is actually going to siphon – work away from Devont Freeman at the goal line. I don't view this as a red flag. If somehow For Olsen, what it's worth, Olsen's humongous. He's 6'2", yes, 225. Sure. When you talk about Ito, Ito's what? Uh, He's 5'9", 194. So yes. if you did want to give the ball to a Latavius Murray-esque type of runner around the goal line, which sometimes teams just want to do, Olsen at least fits the physical build, but he sure. have to prove himself. And, yeah. and look, that's the analysis I wanted. Do you think it's fluff or not? Um, Spencer Ware's on the active PUP. Marquise Lee coming off the knee injury is on the active PUP list. Uh, Cooper Cup will avoid it. That's big news. Cooper That's Cup great. avoiding wow. the active PUP to open training camp. Feeling good. That's interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, he he was doing some uh, individual drills through OTA, uh, you know, and now the fact that he's coming into camp not on the pup says he is at a place where preseason, presumably, he'll be a full full go. They they they're still going to take it light with him right now. They've got him on a schedule, but it's what you want to see because we've been interpreting the length of time for his injury as. Cooper Cup could be someone that gets off to a slower start, kind of gets his his footing uh, better in the second half of the year. But if if he's ahead of the game, you know maybe you move him up a little bit, and you're more confident in drafting him as a week one play, like we'll, you're doing we'll with Emmanuel Sanders. No, nope. avoided the active PUP. Correct. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll see on both those. I've, guys. Seen, I've seen too many players come back from ACLs and be just fine. Right away, you've seen that the next year. Mm. I mean, they're, they're okay. Yeah, I think it's Versus significant. Achilles. I think it's significant that both players avoid it. I think it's significant that they're on the field. Uh, check out the Sleeper app. Not just the best breaking news, but the best platform. I saw that they're working on um, some mascot stuff. Yeah, but they're they're focusing a bunch of developing work on uh, night mode. Oh yeah, yeah. Night mode. Oh, no, dark the mode. They. Uh, That's all yes. the rage, man. <laughs> yes. You, you should see me. My dark mode. When, oh, when you get, turn the lights off? I get real scary. <laughs> I, can, I can only imagine. I know we don't like to lean on dreaming as a prognostication method other than Jason. Uh, Jason, well, I do. Jason loves to do it. I had a dream last night, guys. Uh-oh. Just checking the fantasy scores from week one. Just remember, his nickname is The Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Let's hear who's <laughs> about to go down, Andy. You're not going to like it oh. now, now that you set that up. Oh, no. Uh, week one. Number one running back, most fantasy points. My dream last night was Todd Gurley. <laughs> uh, no, no, of course that can it's happen. Todd Gurley, the number one. He comes out, sets the world on fire. As the dynasty owner of Todd Gurley, I do not appreciate the Reaper sharing good news <laughs> on Todd Gurley. Uh, you might trade him by then. We'll see. Hey, we're going to get into the NFC North breakdown momentarily. We do want to thank today's sponsor. You've heard of them. Uh, they're all over NFL report, all over. reporting right now, and that is The Athletic. In fact, I just posted about uh, three or four days ago. Great um, article on Josh Allen that was released on The Athletic. Shows a bunch of his uh, analysis on his, his arm strength, his mobility, what he actually did in the offense. Um, incredible content. The Athletic, if you don't know about them, it, they're a subscription-based publisher of smarter sports coverage for diehard fans. And their model is very simple. You don't get ads, you don't get pop-ups, and you don't get autoplay videos. The coverage goes beyond game recap, smarter analysis. You guys joke about me being a newspaper type of guy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I love getting the newspaper as a kid, going and reading the sports stories. The, the closest thing we have to that level of you know newspaper journalism, but up-to-date and local and with your favorite team is The Athletic. And they have a team of talented writers. They're adding more and more coverage every day. And you can subscribe with a special discount from us. Go to theathletic.com slash footballers for 40% off a yearly subscription. That means it's just two ninety nine a month. So if you want some sports coverage, go to theathletic.com slash footballers. That's a pretty good deal. And yeah. hey, look, if you are getting your league together, either a new one or you want to celebrate last year's champion, Go to FantasyChamps.com. Use the promo code BALLERS to save 10%. Fantasy Champs has awesome trophies. You can customize it. Really cool championship belts to to rub into the faces of mm. all the other losers. Well, in your not league. physic. Like, if you actually take this steel belt and rub right. it on someone's face, you can it's, shape it's, it. It's, shape it's, it. it's assault. Yes. It's we, assault, but I like, well, I'm not saying you should do that because it's assault. We're not saying you shouldn't do but it. But we're saying you could. <laughs> You could do that, but if you're going to do it, you do it at FantasyChamps.com. And then, and then, look, I'm just saying, their championship rings, they're gigantic. And so, like, if you were getting in a fight, look, that's assault. But if you're wearing those rings, you're gonna, the champ is going to win that fight. I'm just saying, FantasyChamps.com, promo code BALLERS. Protect yourself. Protect yourself. <laughs> Let's get divisional. All right, the NFC North last year, the Bears. Oh, they blew it up. 12-4 and four with that incredible defense. Yes. We'll talk about the Bears today. Uh, um, <laughs> they were great. The Vikings, 8-7-1. The Packers, 6-9-1. The Lions, 6-10. and 10. 
We'll start with the Bears. Jay Grizz, obviously, he will weigh in. Huge fan. As well as, well as he can. Last year, this was a team that everything was predicated on the number one rush defense in football, number seven pass defense. They were just a dominating, incredible defense that set the table for everything they did. Um, <clears throat> we need to talk through the offensive fantasy options and what we believe about the Bears going into 2019, Mitch Trubisky. The one thing I want to bring up real quick on him is simply the fact that this is his second year with Matt Nagy, right? This is his sure. second opportunity in that offense. I want people to remember that because, you know, sometimes it's year three for Mitch Trubisky, right? That is correct, yeah. But second year in a new offense with <clears throat> offensive coordinator Matt Hel uh, Mark Helfrich. David Montgomery, Tariq Cohen, Mike Davis, the running backs, Allen Robinson, Anthony Miller, Taylor Gabriel, significant uh, wideouts there. And then Trey Burton last year, very hyped, could be a post-hype sleeper in fantasy this season. Right now, let's start with the running backs. David Montgomery Ooh. is being drafted at 402. Tariq Cohen's, Ooh, stop. <laughs> Tariq Cohen's stop. being drafted at 512. 512. I want to bring up Tariq Cohen because a lot of time and effort and energy has been given to looking at David opportunity. Mom opportunity and, and the chance he has in this offense. So I want to talk about Tariq Cohen. I tweeted something the other day. He was number one in football in yards uh, from scrimmage per touch, 6.9 yes. ahead of everybody else. Uh, very dynamic player. Um, had a good fantasy football week, 63% of the time. From weeks 4 through 13, he was the RB12 in football. I'm just curious where you're at with Tariq Cohen because, you know, he's a great player. I don't know if he could have done right. anything more with the opportunity he had last year. So I don't see any reason why the team doesn't want to utilize him in the same fashion, and that equated to a very nice finish. I have him at RB21. Mike, you've got him all the way down at 31. Jason, you're splitting the difference here at RB26. So here's the here's my concern for Tariq Cohen. Uh, number one, regression is just – it's coming for Tariq Cohen naturally, even if they utilize him the same way. Since the year 2000, there are only eight instances where a running back has had 70 or more receptions and cleared 10 yards per reception. So what he did last year in the passing game was actually – on a historic level, and that's where he gets his entire value. Now, if, if you look back the first three games when the, the Chicago Bears were trying their best to, to turn Jordan Howard into a three-down skill set running back where they actually gave him some targets, in those first three weeks, here's Tariq Cohen's passing line, or receiving line. 2.7 targets per game, 16 receiving yards per game. Yeah, he... It was all Howard. It was all Howard all the time. And that's my concern for Cohen is that they've paid up for David Montgomery because he has the, the three-down skill set. Tariq Cohen will still – he's still going to play. He's, he's an excellent player. He's great for this offense. But if he turns if, – if a lot of that passing work or even part of that passing work gets transferred over to David Montgomery – then I think people are going to be very disappointed that they spent the fifth round pick on on Tariq Cohen. He won't be nearly as consistent as as he was last year. What? That's Go that, ahead. that's the take that I'm on as well. I I worry about Tariq Cohen because I do believe they want a back in Matt Nagy's system that can be a three down back. You they they showed it and then they paid up heavily in the draft to get their guy. So I I I worry that Tariq Cohen's going away. However. One thing that's worth bringing up a little bit, I know the Bears' defense, they're, they're very good, but some of what they did from a turnover margin, things like that, they're not sustainable from last year. You lose Vic Fangio as a defensive coordinator and you replace him with Chuck Pagano, who is a defensive mind sure. that I, never had good defensive teams. Yeah, I, I don't have any concerns about this no, my, defense. My point is yeah. just they won. I mean, they were a 12-win team. They yes. were in game, you know, winning game scripts. They didn't so want to lose. They didn't often. want to lose Vic Fangio. <laughs> and and so my point is, if maybe you know they are in more losing situations, that bodes well for Tariq Cohen. Can in that sense, but for the most part, I if you're asking, would I rather have 
at the high price of an early fourth round, David Montgomery, or uh, the cheaper price of almost the sixth round for Tariq Cohen, I'm still going my opportunity. And, I, and I'll, I'll go the other direction. I think Cohen's the better value in that situation. And my, a couple counterpoints just to bring up to kind of sure. help people make their decisions about the backfield. One, Jordan Howard was not a slouch in terms of offensive snaps and participation in this offense. You already had an right. offense last year where he had 250 carries. In fact, his 3,370 yards is in the top five over the last three years. He's just been – it's crazy when you let a guy go that's been that effective on the ground. Obviously, it's about a fit for this team. He had 20 receptions last year. So, yes, does David Montgomery maybe eat in – does he catch 30, 35 Mo passes in more. his rookie season? They brought in Mike Davis, who was on the field for over 100, yes, and 120 as well. touches last year in Seattle. The reason they bring in these guys and they, they move on from a Howard is for fit, obviously. Right. It's not just production on the ground. It's for fit. The Bears were one of the least efficient teams – when they ran multiple back sets. And that's something they want to do in that kind of an option shotgun offense. They want multiple backs on the field. So when Tariq Cohen is, is highly effective and he's going to still be on the field in multiple back sets, and Jordan Howard did have a huge touch count. I mean, 270 touches is a lot. Those would be kind of some of the reasons I believe Tariq Cohen will continue doing what he's doing and, and give you better value than maybe. Sure. And, and let's say the first, you think Montgomery – is he going to be that guy the first four weeks of the season? Maybe there's huge opportunity for somebody to get max value out of Tariq Cohen over the first four to six weeks as Montgomery acclimates to this system. That That's some of the things that I'm thinking about as a as I contemplate drafting a bear. It, sure. It's definitely worth bringing it up. I do believe Montgomery comes out as a near workhorse from week one. And Tariq Cohen went from... 6.7 yards per reception to 10.2. I mean, that's that's a massive, massive jump, and <clears throat> maybe he's somewhere in between those two. Maybe it's not as bad as 6.7, but you're going to need him to be an incredibly efficient receiver out of the backfield. And I have my last point here is if you look at pro football reference, they, they in fact give you the nicknames of these players. And there's been an addition to Tariq Cohen. And oh, it, no, on. No, it is not Jason's – Abomination. It's of not the dinosaur Come hunter, on. but it actually. Well, Jason's might be better because he's been called the human joystick before. I've heard that one, but there's a new one. So let me see if this affects your fantasy rankings or not. Chicken salad. Chicken salad. What? Exactly. He's <laughs> on Pro Football Reference. That's his nickname. Listed what? as the human joystick. Do you guys like chicken, chicken salad? No. It's, Turok the dinosaur it's hunter terrible. sounding pretty good right about now. Yes. <laughs> And no, chicken salad is terrible. Chicken yeah. on a salad's fine. Chicken salad is like, why not? Why chicken didn't you give me a tuna, tuna salad? salad? Tuna salad. Tuna salad. Too many variables for both of those situations. <laughs> I worry about the mayonnaise situation and all like salads brought yeah, to a like potluck situation. Like there's not enough? What? Not enough? More mayonnaise. People don't keep track of the expiration on their mayonnaise very closely. Oh, if, if it's an outdoor picnic, no, I'm not taking, Get, that. I mean, no, I'm not taking the risk. That's the quickest way. To, to the, the ER. To the restroom. <laughs> yeah, All right. in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. I think we should uh, – we need to linger and talk about Mitch Trubisky and these wide receivers and even Trey Burton. Can Mitch Trubisky take another step forward? Um, you know, he had windows of elite play last year. Most of them uh, brought forward to belittle Jason. He was feast or famine last season. Who Mitchell Trubisky is is a gargantuan question mark. We, we had a live stream yesterday, Andy, after you had to leave that, we were asked what... After I was asked to leave. I was, yes. I was after we out. had you escorted out of yes. the building, <laughs> we were asked what quarterback outside of the top 12 has a chance to be like a top three quarterback. And when, when it came to Mitch Trubisky, he's such a question mark because I don't believe that Mike or myself thinks that Mitch Trubisky is actually going to be a great quarterback. I still don't believe that that's true, but... It is his second year with Nagy. You did see unbelievable flashes. He only had one year as a starter in college. He's got the weapons. He's got the coach. He's the, young. I mean, the, the could-bes, if he were to take a step forward. The two players that you guys have disagreed most with me in draft evaluation are Mitch Trubisky and Josh Allen. Yeah. So Trubisky has to take a step forward this year. Bears fans are as on the fence as we are, the, the rational ones with – you know, 
not the Bears colored glasses on. This is a huge year for Mr. Trubisky, but it is another year where he gets to, and if you go listen to what it's like around camp, it's the it's moving from installing an offense to not thinking and naturally running an offense. Another player that I think can contribute to Trubisky's potential success this year is second round draft pick Anthony Miller from a season ago. He's sure. good. Anthony Miller question marks abound. Oh, you know, the seven touchdowns, is that a fluke? Here's what people don't remember about Anthony Miller, and one of the reasons I acquired him in our Dynasty League this past week. Anthony Miller injured his shoulder in the in their game against the Cardinals in September of last season. He played through a separated shoulder the duration of the year, produced, and then had surgery in the offseason. You, you could even so, see it on certain plays. You you could see how hurt he was through the year with that shoulder if, if you were watching the Bears games. Absolutely. So I think Anthony Miller is somebody being uh, a little – Mike, do you have his ADP by chance? Can you look that up for can, me? I've uh, got it. So you look at Allen Robinson, you look at Anthony Miller. Maybe pull both of those he is, up. Anthony Miller is at the back of the 11th round, Whew. the 135th player taken. Sure. It's a sneaky situation there. Now, again, different lens for us. We're looking to find the next big thing on Chicago for fantasy owners. They like Taylor Gabriel. They like using him in the offense. He will be a piece of the puzzle along with Robinson, Burton, and these other um, weapons. So if the offense doesn't take a step forward, you could get lost in kind of a sea of just okay across the whole gamut right. and, of and, wideouts. And that's how I find myself drafting. I, sure. I pretty much don't want... Uh, Trey Burton or Allen Robinson, maybe Anthony Miller because he is so cheap, I'm willing to take a shot on because the way that I view the, the Bears is either they're going to be a very good offense and you're going to just want pieces of this team or they're going to disappoint across the board. So I would take the cheap options later in the draft like Anthony Miller over a more expensive option like Allen Robinson. And why I like Anthony Miller at that draft price is because of what we're talking about, the high-powered offense, but not a lot of wide – what they're – right now, Anthony Miller is the wide receiver two on that team. Not a ton of wide receiver twos have the, uh, the ability or the depth chart to literally play themselves to becoming the number one guy on that team. Like Allen Robinson, I, I still believe that he's a good wide receiver, but – he may it's, be capped at this it's, point. It's tough when when the fourteen hundred and fourteen touchdowns was so many years ago, and we're still only seeing brief flashes from from Allen Robinson that he is still that guy. And Anthony Miller was a high draft pick. He's he's got a great burst score. He's he could take Allen Robinson's job as the number one target for uh, number one right. wide receiving target from Trubisky. Let me ask you to this question. Get You're, him in Dynasty right now. You, yes, in Dynasty, a great uh, – the future, because Allen Robinson, they could pretty much move on and save a ton of money after this season. Dynasty, Anthony Miller's great. But for this season, redraft, you're in your draft. You're at the middle to the back of the 11th round. Here are the three wide receivers going in that range. Who would you take? James Washington, Anthony Miller, and Devin Funches. Yeah, I would take Anthony Miller. Miller. Yeah. Yeah, I would as well. It'd be, it'd be interesting, you know – you, you might know really quickly about Washington to start the year. Might know really quickly about Funches' involvement to start the year. Um, yeah, that, I would take Miller in that group. Also, for what it's worth, for those out, out there that are just desperate and dying to draft the defense early, over the last 10 years, only one overall number one fantasy defense has gone on to finish in the top five the next year. So only one time has that happened. That's not to say, I, look, I believe in this defense to be great. Yes, but you just don't invest in fantasy defenses because there's, you the, know, their schedules change and there's variables and there's just too the many Jacksonville things. Jaguars were as locked and loaded as a guaranteed phenomenal defense as you can find in the last decade. They were a game changer and everyone drafted them early last year and they disappointed. They were still good. It was still, but for fantasy purposes touchdowns didn't happen to fall their way. It just takes one injury, too. And, and nobody was happy that drafted Jacksonville early last year. And, and again, I bring up the fact that they lost one of the best defensive minds and replaced him with a... Uh, okay. With a dude. With a dude. <laughs> All right, the Vikings, 8-7-1 and one last season. Start the 2019 year on the road against... Uh, I'm sorry, at home against Atlanta. 
this is a team that looks fairly similar to last year. Uh, Dalvin Cook being drafted in the second round, Thielen in the third, Diggs in the fourth. Um, where do you guys want to turn when we start talking about the Vikings? Man. I guess yesterday on our live stream, Mike, you alluded to the fact that this is a complicated situation yes. to diagnose when it comes to projecting their offense, how effective Cousins, Thielen, and Diggs, their high-paid offensive weapons will be, and what this offense wants to do. Yeah, it's they are a very confusing team to me when, when it comes to the pass catchers and, and Kirk Cousins because – uh, Mike Zimmer is the head coach, so he's the captain of the ship, and he's a hard-nosed defensive type of a guy. They had brought in John DeFilippo to run their offense last year. Zimmer didn't like how pass-heavy they were and felt like it wasn't working. I mean, it was <laughs> DeFilippo got fired with about three weeks left in the season. So people are uh, in the industry, okay, well, we, we have the new the new OC calling the shots for those three games. But it's hard to actually really extrapolate what happened in those final games because they were one, it's a small sample, and you know, it's it's hard to go off a small sample, but that small sample is is very skewed because those final three games were Miami, where they absolutely blew them out, and both Dalvin Cook and Latavius Murray had monster games. The next week was against Detroit, who was at the end of the season, Detroit was had just kind of fallen apart. They blew them out, and then they ran into Chicago, who was the best defense in the league. So it's it's really hard to draw an analysis from those three weeks because, yeah, the, the passing attempts went way down. Like, Stephon Diggs' targets were nearly non-existent. I mean, on those final three games, it was 7, 6, and 10. He never surpassed 50 yards, but he scored in all three of them. Meanwhile, you had Adam Thielen's second-half collapse – compared to his but first half. Those three games you talked about are part of that second half exactly. collapse so as well. It's very difficult for me to gauge what to do with, with, with these wide receivers because they are you, they are probably the best tandem in yes. all of football. Yes. When, when Adam Thielen and Stephon Diggs are, are near top-level wide receivers. and No, I take that back. They are top-level wide receivers, and Kirk Cousins is a good to – Somewhere between good and great he's, quarterback. He's a good in my to opinion. good quarterback. Uh, good to great. I will put him at good to great. I think Kirk Cousins is very good, and he was certainly up against it with that offensive. I line will last year. allow good to very good. I will not okay. allow good. Okay, to great. I accept your compromise. <laughs> okay. Good to very good. Yeah, I mean, look, you need to take a wider perspective. It's like this show. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Great to very great. Thank you. Um, no, the, the, you got to take a wider perspective with them, like Mike's bringing up. You can't just look at, uh, okay, they changed their offensive coordinator, small sample, now we know exactly what's going to happen. Here's what we do know. They have paid Adam Thielen, yeah, they, they Kirk just Cousin, Thielen. and Stefan Diggs a lot of money, and they're very good. This is a good offense. They've made some slight improvements to the offensive line, and we do know that they want to run the ball more. They have lost Latavius Murray. Replaced him with Can't a guy find him anywhere. whose name is Alexander Madison. Ooh, and uh, you know the, the the word on the, the down low from some of our Minnesota sources is that one of the biggest changes is that goal line belongs to Dalvin Cook. When it comes to Dalvin Cook, Stefan Diggs, Adam Thielen, I am personally in in and in. I okay. I like them. I think they're all going to be great fantasy options this year, barring injury. It should be a good team that's experienced they don't have a lot of change and when you don't have a lot of change you don't get a lot of publicity you don't get a lot of the conversation so you don't get that no buzz. it's all been negative I mean the all the news about them you have fantasy reactions to Thielen's collapse fantasy reactions to transitioning offense oh no you're not going to pass the ball enough I think they want to be balanced and I think if goal line goes to Dalvin Cook you're going to have a top five running back that's what's going to happen. It's definitely he was, in the he realm was the RB6 from weeks 12 through 16 last year. If Latavius Murray, who, look, he's being brought in to play that role in New Orleans, if Dalvin Cook can stay healthy, this offense, you know, the majority opinion out there is that they're a top five offense in football. So can they go out and do it? They were 30th in rushing yards last year. That's not going to do. That's it. not very good. But but they're going to. They want to be balanced. They're a, a, a middle to better defense, and I think the sky is the limit for Dalvin Cook. I really do. I completely agree. The sky is the limit, but also his his body. 
Yeah, that's. I mean, it, yeah, Dal- the body is the limit for. for Dal- Dalvin. Like Dalvin Cook is. You are in. You- it's hard not to label Dalvin Cook as injury prone, and I don't like labeling guys that. But them knees, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're injury prone until you're not in football. I mean, sure. that's, so so Dalvin Cook, that's Todd Gurley, they're right next to each other. You're worried about injury. Obviously, we know the upside of Gurley. Um, I would take Gurley. You would take Gurley over Cook? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just did this in our mock. I took Cook in the first round, put the crown on his head, took Gurley in the second round. Um, but, no, I mean, he no seasons for Dalvin Cook over 133 attempts, which was last year. But he's been a 4.7 a carry guy. 40 receptions in 2018. Oh, his his that's skill set's where amazing. People need to remember Dalvin Cook because who's going to catch the ball out of the backfield in this offense? Dalvin. It's just Dalvin. Stay healthy, my friend. <laughs> Stay healthy. But if he's not, Alexander Madison is going to be very interesting. And just throwing this out there before we move on to the Packers, right now, Mike, you have Diggs above Thielen. Jason, you have Thielen above Diggs. And I have Thielen two spots above Diggs. So. Um, every year we get to weigh in on the Diggs Thielen thing for the remainder of our natural life. Oh, I and can't it, wait! It has every year turned out to be Thielen, and it will continue to turn out to be Thielen. Obviously, that's my that's my rank. Right. Well, our <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, of course. All right, the Packers. This is a difficult team to talk about when it comes to fantasy expectations. Um, outside of probably one player, the Packers Two. were what? six what? nine and one. Yeah, you're, you're that you're you're down on Rodgers. I'm not down on Rodgers. I believe in Rodgers, but expectation wise, efficiency wise, what the offense looks like, will he be upper echelon? It's been a little while since he's he's turned on the Jets for it's a full like season. A year. Well, he's been he hasn't been healthy. Sure. So if you mix you mix the replacing of head coach Mike McCarthy for Matt Lafleur, uh, he had I believe his least efficient touchdown year last year you've been banged up multiple years in a row and he's finding himself in that situation I think there there are question marks there are more question marks around Rodgers than Devontae Adams do you disagree there are definitely more For, around, from yes. fantasy perspective De- Devontae Adams the only question around Devontae Adams is should he be the number one wide receiver or should he just be a top three wide receiver? Like, that's the biggest question. With Aaron Rodgers, obviously he was injured in 2017, healthy for 2018, and he finishes the quarterback six, which was not a payoff of the draft price. No, nor the second most pass plays in the league, which is not something normal for Aaron Rodgers. Right. Finishes sixth, lowest touchdown rate of his career, 4.2%. And this was interesting. Storyline, Aaron Rodgers, last 49 games played. He's 24-24-1. and one. That's his record. So changes happening in Green Bay. Let's try to wade through them. Devontae Adams locked and loaded. Aaron Rodgers, we know he's – we all have him projected to be a top five quarterback, and we're not telling you to draft him early. So I stared him down in the late fifth of our mock. Didn't take him. Um, probably some players with higher upside than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, the, so for draft price, I mean, correct. If we're talking about Aaron Rodgers, he finishes the quarterback six last year. He had a, a much less efficient year than he usually has. However, he was dealing with Devontae Adams, a decrepit Jimmy Graham, and and rookies. And you know what I mean? Like the, he didn't have. I, I think that the decrepit. Oh, it's put that it's on the mic. It's, but it's true. Put put that on the list of things I don't want. Don't labeled. want to be described. I don't as. want to be labeled as this year. I think you're going. To, you've already had a lot of conversation in and around the building about getting Aaron Jones the ball in the passing game more, which he is so good at. That's going to be helpful. Uh, from from everything we can tell, Marquez Valdez Scantling has taken a step up. He appears to be the number two on the outside. Geronimo is going to the slot, which I think yes. is is better at this point. So I believe Aaron Rodgers has a better wide receiving core and a better all around team going forward. I really like what they did. Um, this this whole off season from a personnel standpoint. So if six was kind of the the floor for Rodgers, I can't see him not being a you know a, a top end quarterback this season. And for the first time, pretty much ever, other than when he's injured, he's not being drafted. I mean, you know his his average draft price right now is I don't know. It's usually where Mahomes is going right now. Right. So. so- Rodgers is in the middle of the fifth right now behind Andrew Luck and behind Pat Mahomes. If his wide receiver core has improved, 
then it's going to be difficult to believe that they'll use Aaron Jones to the degree that fantasy football owners will want out of the backfield. Over the last five years, Green Bay is the second lowest in the league at targeting the running backs out of the backfield. And I think that's just – I think that's a result of Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is a player that extends plays. Yeah, he'd rather His eyes it. are downfield at all times. Now, presumably, MVS in year two and a healthy Geronimo Allison – he should have more wide receivers open downfield, and even the decrepit Jimmy Graham helps Rodgers more than he does fantasy owners. So I don't know if I buy that Jones will be as heavily utilized in the passing game as we would want him to be, but the, the beauty of Aaron Jones is he is a hyper-efficient player. So if he's on the field and does receive targets and, and carries, he has proven to be the most efficient running back in football. So... Get him out there a little bit more. Let him do his thing, his Jamal Charles thing. And I think you have a good season from Aaron Jones. And he will have to do that again. <clears throat> I mean, he's obviously doing it, but because the reports coming out of Green Bay are still talking about spreading the backfield around. Uh, there is no – been, but no inclining that, that – they're going yeah, – I've made up a word. It's that funny. is a new word. Whatever. Okay. There has been no hint, no whispers from the bushes from the Green Bay camp that they're going to feature Aaron Jones, which – It doesn't is, matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. Here's why. Let's say they keep it as a timeshare. There were times last year where Aaron Jones was rocking for fantasy. Top 12 through several week stretches as a running back. Let's say they keep him in that same timeshare – but instead of Green Bay being the 32nd out of 32 teams in rushing attempts with 333 as a team, they they are actually a little bit more balanced, which is also what the what you know has been discussed. Last year they just didn't run the ball. If you're telling me that they're middle of the pack and they're up at 415 carries, I mean, you're you're talking about almost 100 more carries to split up. So, yeah, maybe he's in a timeshare, but there will by necessity be more volume for Aaron Jones this year, even if he doesn't become the workhorse. So I, I do like Aaron Jones. I definitely like Aaron Jones, and I hope that that is the case. I believe that he will have a lot more work. He's a great player. I mean, only 133 attempts last year. Turned that into 729 rushing yards, yep. which is pretty incredible. And he only played, you know, the 12 games. Um I think we, if I'm honest, I think that we're sifting through these wide receivers day by day outside of Devontae Adams. Um, it looks like we're kind of polar opposite in rankings. Mike, you said you are. I'm an, Team Geronimo. You're Team yeah. Geronimo. Now, you, you clearly had to have wavered for a, a period of time on Team Geronimo. There, yes. there, there was a little stretch there. There was. There, like, I, your uh, knees were buckling a little not, bit. Not really knees buckling, but. Uh, a, like the sensation that I did, just three quick revolutions. So uh, some butterflies. Yeah, we know the, the 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 equilibrium was a little bit off, but we settled back and we're and I'm I'm still with Allison and even with him moving into the slot, I don't. It doesn't bother me at all that okay in two wide receiver sets it's going to be Adams and and Marquez. It's not going to be a lot of two wide receiver sets. Aaron Rodgers wants his wide receivers out there. And this this uh, little nugget here per good friend of the show, Scott Barrett, who says, Rodgers' career targets. He has gone to the slot wide receiver with 25.6% of his attempts, fourth most. That Aaron Rodgers likes to target the guy to the slot, and his passer rating to slot wide receivers is 111.6, a.k.a. the best. So. But but he that, that that that's could also be read as Aaron Rodgers passed it to Randall Cobb blank amount of time. Sure, but I think that Geronimo Allison is actually a is a better wide receiver hmm. than Marquez. Okay, Th if you, than Marquez. Yes. Oh, you're, if you had said better than Randall Cobb, I would have smacked you. Um, in his heyday, that is. I mean, we don't, oh, yeah. we don't have anything no, proven sure. out of but Allison. But Randall Cobb is no longer there, and so I, I think Allison's the second-best wide receiver on the team. The so, Packers ran three wide 78% of the time, second highest in the league behind the Rams. I don't know how much I can you – know, you, you can you project saw, it because LaFleur is coming camp, in. Yes. New, new camp, new, new offense. That's, yeah. that's part of the problem to me. Allison hasn't proven himself. MBS hasn't proven himself. So you are taking a, a level of risk at banking on – you can spin the outside stats, you can spin the inside stats. I think you are literally taking your pick 
Yes, I, and I agree with gonna, that. And the truth is, it could be both. It could absolutely be both. And that could be, be the both. problem. Aaron Rod- no, I don't, think that, I don't think that would be a problem. I think if both step forward, we've seen Aaron Rodgers support three wide receivers before when it was James Jones, Devonta Adams, and Jordy Nelson. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm saying that that could possibly happen. But while I've got Geronimo Allison definitely leading in targets – and you know, and receptions over Marquez, I I do think that for fantasy purposes, the more valuable role is going to be that outside role, and it fits Marquez. The reason why I'm saying get out of here with Geronimo being better than uh, than uh, Marquez Valdez scaling, I think sure as a, maybe as a route runner, as you know, just a just a a jack of all trades, veteran wide receiver. Yes, he's he's a little better. But Marquez Valdez Scantling is one is, is a pretty good receiver coming into his second year. But two, he is a physical freak. He's six four, two hundred and six pounds, ran a four three seven. So now they're finally getting him on the outside with blazing speed. He's a with monster. Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback. I, I see like if I'm gonna take my shot on a guy who's just going to explode, I don't think it's gonna be Geronimo. Give me Jarvis Landry in the slot over Geronimo Allison in the slot this year. Yeah. Okay. All right, the Lions. We're talking about the Detroit Lions. Tu- yes. Tough division. Yes. Everyone's favorite. Well, my I mean, favorite. Ninja's the- favorite. Everyone's favorite. Your Carry favorite. You know, there were some rumors yesterday as we get into it. Um, I do have some breaking news. I guess I should push the button. Yeah. Is that- breaking news. Very big. Uh, Cam Newton. Will not start on the active PUP. He's healthy. He's ready to go. Oh, oh man. That's good news. Yo, that is fantastic news. Good news. Just bro. Cam Newton ready to go for 2019. Scoop him up late while you can. I love I love Cam Newton's value this year. Do some booty scooping. We, we saw this sir. <laughs> we oh, I love it. Hold on. Uh, wait. We gotta hold on. No. <laughs> He's okay. giving me a good oh, score gonna, on this one. You're gonna rate him on that? I'm re- oh, that was booty scooping. Scoop- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like it. I'm oh, a- <laughs> come on. I got oh, an eight. eight. I got an eight. All right. Um, but anyways, back to back to the Lions. Back to carry on <laughs> Johnson. Some rumors that Theo Riddick might not even make this roster. What? Did I see this? The yesterday? rumors were started by me. What? No. I, look, he's been one of the least effective third down running backs. Now. We've always been kind of, as fantasy owners, look, he's on the field, he gets targeted, you pay attention, but he's not been very effective. Carry on Johnson has a better, like, one carry on Johnson backfield target is not worth the same as one theoretic target. Riddick has a hard time taking the, re- he can, he can, he can make the reception. Right. He just can't, he's got good hands. Do stuff with the reception. That's well, been maybe the problem. Not anymore. And so carry on's more valuable in that capacity. They brought in CJ Anderson as an offseason addition. And they brought in Danny Amendola, who can function as a short yardage, yes, uh, pepper him with target type of guy. There may not be a need for Theoretic, and I think they save over $3 million if they were to cut him. Now, I'm not saying they will. But let's get it going, people. But let's get it going. Because he'll sign somewhere. We're not, we're not, look, he's, Theoretic's, you're saying he'll be fine. He'll be fine. <laughs> let's start the. Feel Riddick getting cut train. It's because you want Kerryon Johnson to catch 50-plus passes. You want Kerryon Johnson he to will. stay healthy. And, um, look, this could be a great year for them. They're going to need to improve on offense. 20th in passing yards per game. 23rd in rushing yards per game. 25th in points per game. Matt Patricia's mark on this offense hasn't been great. Well, and He wants something that they couldn't do. To be fair to Matt Patricia, I mean, the, the – all the the reports that came out, you know, pretty late. Like we had no inkling to this during the season, but the reports of Stafford playing through small fractures in his back, and this was I mean, Stafford's worst year in a long time by a mile. And so, like the math checks out that Stafford all of a sudden goes from being a, a very efficient game manager to just a bad quarterback. It, like maybe he really had was dealing with this injury, it, not maybe was, but but was, and it was severely impacting his play. So it wouldn't shock me to see Stafford turn things around 
rapidly. That doesn't mean I want him for my fantasy team. But, it, what but it, for Detroit, it could be what a, it means much is better. De Detroit's offense will just be better than it was last year, which isn't very difficult because they weren't very good last year. Right. They bring in a new offensive coordinator, Daryl Bevel. If you don't remember Daryl Bevel replacing Jim Bob Cooter. He was from the Seattle Seahawks. This is a very, very large change this from JBC. This is a very large change. This is, And this is a Matt Patricia type of guy. They want to run the ball the way that Seattle wants to run the ball. They want to run the ball like it was 1988, and it's your dad's football. But that's great news. That's when Scategories was invented. For Carry On Johnson, <laughs> because they're going to run. <laughs> yes, it is. By it's, Parker Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Uh, that one will make sense in a couple weeks. Anyways, um, the the thing is, is they are going to run the ball far more than they did last year. And if you look at what Carryon Johnson did last season, okay, he didn't get really a, a large volume of carries until week three. They came out and were like, oh, Garrett Blunt's our guy. <laughs> and so I don't know why they did that, but eventually they were like, man, this Carryon Johnson guy is was good. It, and Garrett Blunt was like worst in league. Of yards he, per touch. He, he was, Can I throw one thing oh, in? Because I want you to go talk. I want you to talk about carry on until your heart's content. I'm, I'm so excited. But but you need to look at that situation that happened last year. And again, refocus. The lens we look at, not the same lens as the coaches. Yes. Carry on is as tangibly better, visually better, practically better. Everything that you see on film and know about him. He is better than LeGarrette Blunt. LeGarrette Blunt was the single least efficient player at yards before contact last year. He took the mantle. He took the trophy. It didn't matter that he was that bad. I'm just pointing it out there. Not as an anti-carry on this year, as a template for other teams might not put their amazing, incredible rookie in a position to succeed from day one. I Sure, and I don't believe carry on is the workhorse bell cow back. I think they brought in C.J. Anderson to give him work. If Theo Riddick is in, involved, he will still get some work. But look at last season with a putrid offense that I think will get slightly better this season and the worst running back in football in LeGarrette Blunt, who is stopping drives, stopping first downs, uh, taking away touchdown opportunities because of that, you had from week three until Carry On got Johnson, Carry On got Johnson, Carry On Johnson got injured <laughs> oh in week 10. Oh! He was on pace already with LeGarrette Blunt there with the bad offense for 210 attempts, 1,162 yards. He was already a top 15 running back during that stretch, and he wasn't the starter. Now he comes into this offseason. He is the guy. They're no going, debate. There's no debate. Carry no on debate. Johnson's the one from Fun. camp on, and he was already a top 15 running back in fantasy for putrid Detroit Lions last year. Yes. There's no world. There is no world where Carry on Johnson is not a top fifteen back this year. There is a world. There's not. Yes, no, there is injury. The world. No, the world is. He doesn't score enough, and he's in a division that faces the Vikings and the Bears defense twice, and they're a bad offense, and they're the worst team in the division, and that hurts Carry on Johnson. That's the world. He doesn't get the passing game work that we want, and they're a bad team. So I think that there is an. That's a possible outcome. I concede all the value of Carry on. He's incredible. He should be great. We saw what happened last year on a bad offense in Arizona with David Johnson. When he was, was a top 10 back. Yeah, he was a top 10 back. Right. But he was projected to be the number one back. Are you projecting carry on I, as I, the number one back? No, that's my point. Okay, so like, where are you projecting him? My, my point. Top 15. Top 15, that's okay. what I'm saying. And the, and but that, if, if, if David Johnson can go from being a projected number one down to 10 at the position because of an offense – then a top 15 projected guy can drop because of an offense. That's all I'm saying. I'm not – I'm not saying it will happen. I'm saying that there is a world where they're not – they're one of the five worst teams in football. And they were last year when he was a top 15 option as – you know when during that entire stretch of the season. That's what I'm saying. And right now he is the 19th running back off the board in almost the fourth round, the 311. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying take your shot. You're going to be happy. Yeah, I'm, I lean more on the side with Jason. Of course. I like Kerryon Johnson. I, you asked the question, what is the potential of him being outside that range – I think it exists when you're on a bad team. Matthew Stafford, we talked about him. Kenny G, Marvin Jones, if this is not going to be the passing offense that it has been in the past, as the as you both just, you know, made your case that it won't be, I'm I'm scared of Kenny Galladay for two reasons. One, passing volume coming down, and two, Marvin Jones being healthy and a good player. A player that, you know, one week it could be a Marvin Jones week, one week it can be a Kenny G week. Uh I didn't see – he didn't 
Oh, how do I put this? He just didn't, much like Cortland Sutton, didn't show up and show out as often as I would have wanted him to do. Well, he had yeah, he had massive opportunity to say that's that's my point. He to plant his flag and say I am the undisputed alpha wide receiver one of this team because and Marvin Jones missed essentially the entire second half of the season. We have Marvin Jones in our ultimate draft kit as a draft value. Well, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Not that it's probable, but it's not out of the realm of, of a realistic outcome that Marvin Jones actually finishes higher than Kenny Galladay on the year. I think it's just a matter of where the touchdowns fall. Galladay is the fourth one is round being drafted pick. The fourth round. One yeah. is being drafted in double that in the eighth round. I mean, yeah, the value is on the Marvin Jones side. Any expectations for rookie tight end TJ Hawkinson in year one? No. No. They want to run the ball. What about in year eight? Oh, yeah. Uh, look, TJ Hawkinson, I think, is going to be a good player. Rookie tight ends are not where you want to go. And if you want to take a shot at a rookie wide receiver, you need to take a shot at a guy who is pretty much exclusively a pass catcher, a la Evan Ingram. I think you who, meant tight end, right? Yes, uh, uh, okay. uh, tight end. You want to take it as uh, as a pa – you want a pass catching rookie incoming right. tight end. TJ Hawkins is a great block, run blocker. I like that, that he's out the there. Ball. I like that he's out there. He'll be out there for every snap. That's what I think. I think Hawkins will be on the field the majority of the year. I like that, but, you know, I'm not taking any fantasy shares of him unless he surprises yep. us, right? And – and it's I won't focus on it too long, but Danny Amendola does carry incredibly late round PPR value. Yes, given given the way that Stafford has played football his entire career, you look back to how great Golden Tate was because he was a target monster. When Golden Tate left, there was this huge hole, and the offense suffered. They ended up bringing in Bruce Ellington off of the street, and they said. Okay, uh, Bruce, you're going to play. And what did he do his his first week? Nine targets. Nine yeah. targets. No, to a guy off of the street, nine targets, followed by seven, followed by ten. Danny Amendola I know, is, but is, is, is a valuable name to know if you're in a 16-team league. If you're in a super deep you. league where you're you're going near the bottom and you're like, man, I don't know who to draft. Look for Danny He's Amendola in those leagues. He's played ten seasons of football. He's been relevant for fantasy one time a long, long time ago. He's like talking about Eli Rogers to me. 14, 16 team PPR in, leagues. In, in fairness, I just don't. So, I, do you think he can catch more than. It's not a season number. It's, it's not a season number because okay. Danny Amendola. You're saying a week to week. Yes. Stream yes. a guy in the right match. Over the last 10 sure. years, Danny Amendola has been very valuable every year for like a few weeks. When he's, <laughs> yeah, when sure. he's playing. Sure. Yeah. I don't disagree with that. You're right. Ellington last year, I started him in a league because you just tried to soak up targets. Marvin Jones coming back, running And now offense. let's talk about Zach Zinner. I, uh, <laughs> let's, let's not uh -oh. and say we did. How about that? All right. Um, I think that's it. Oh, my gosh. We oh, did it. I think we did it. Pristine deal of the day. All right. Tariq Cohen signed Bears jerseys yesterday, $46.68 on pristineauction.com. Be sure to head over there. Browse their hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. All the autographs, authenticated. Um, they're a great company, one we've been partnering with for a really long time, and they do great work, and you can get some steals. So check it out at pristineauction.com. Impress your friends. Yes, impress them. That is it for today's episode of the show. Back with a Saturday episode, and there will be five days a week coming August. That's exciting. I think it's next week, but either way, we'll still see you Saturday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Hey, Foot Clan, subscribe to The Athletic today and enjoy coverage that goes beyond game recaps to provide smarter analysis. No ads, no pop ups, no autoplay videos. All your national and local coverage from some great writers. Go to theathletic.com slash footballers for 40% off a yearly subscription. Comes out to $2.99 a month. Theathletic.com slash footballers.